pro-life leaders target Title X funding as a step towards defunding Planned Parenthood. Title X funding is the second largest funding stream for Planned Parenthood. It's estimated the abortion giant receives about $60 million a year from the program. Here's how counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, responded last week when EWTN News Nightly's Mark Irons asked her whether the administration will strip Title X funds away from Planned Parenthood. I believe the president will do the right thing here, and Secretary Azar at Health and Human Services, Vice President Pence, um, staffers like me are very loud voices in, in this regard. And this president also recognizes that um, when, when you were taking the money, see there's this ridiculous misnomer where you're defunding Planned Parenthood. No, you're restoring funding to qualified women health centers that do not perform abortion. More than 150 pro-life U.S. House representatives and 40 senators have asked the Department of Health and Human Services to revise Title X regulations so groups that perform or promote abortion do not receive funding. Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri helped lead his Senate colleagues in sending a letter to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. He joins us now from Capitol Hill. Senator, thank you for your time. Hey, Catherine. Nice to be with you. Good to be with you. Senator, why did you take a leadership role in this battle over Title X funding? Well, I think we're looking for every way we can to get uh, the Title X money back to the original purpose, which was uh, truly a family planning or women's health purpose as opposed to anything that encouraged abortion. Uh, President Reagan figured out how to do this in 1988, and so uh, 40 of my colleagues and I, a total of 41 of us, uh, send a letter to the president at the end of April that just said we're asking the president to reinstate that Reagan language which said that you couldn't co-locate a family planning provider with an abortion clinic. You know, there's 16 times as many community health centers as there are uh, uh, Planned Parenthood centers anyways. If you want to make this more available, if you want to make it truly what the program is designed to do and you don't want to support the Planned Parenthood efforts, the way to do that uh, is to do what President Reagan did and President Bush, Bush 41 continued. Uh, President Clinton made it a little harder uh, for the Congress to undo that, but in my view still made it very possible for the president to take this action and we hope he does. How optimistic are you HHS will update the Title X regulations? Well, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. It's the right thing to do. I think it's right in the line with the, the things that the president and the administration have already done. They've already worked with the Congress to reverse the uh, out-the-door policy by President Obama that said states couldn't uh, uh, decertify Planned Parenthood as a Medicaid provider. Uh, that was a Congressional Review Act that the House passed, the Senate passed, uh, and the President signed. I, I think some of the guidance from HHS has also reversed Obama policies that were designed to do that exact same thing. Uh, so this would be something that we know works. We know in, in 1991 the Supreme Court upheld mm -hmm. that as uh, that action as within the executive authority. Uh, and so let's let's find things that work rather than complain about what we don't have the uh, either the votes or the framework to do. And this would be one of those things. Uh, and hopefully the administration is able to take this action and take it soon. I will point out President Reagan, in fairness, did this very late in his presidency. President mm -hmm. Bush continued it. We'd like to see President Trump return to it. Can you put into perspective for us, Senator, how significant defunding Planned Parenthood of this Title X funding is in the big picture goal of completely defunding the abortion giant of taxpayer federal funds? Well, this particular uh, funding is about $60 million. It's uh, out of $500 million. The other funding, the, the funding that the states themselves could do something about, and many states are, is where you act as if uh, uh, and certify Planned Parenthood as a Medicaid provider. Uh, again, that's, uh, that's a rule that we were able to reverse uh, where President Obama was trying to make it impossible for states to do that. A handful of states are already in the progress, making progress toward doing that, and that's where about four 
hundred million of the five hundred million dollars that goes to Planned Parenthood comes through the states. I think the states have the authority. We'd like to see pro-life legislators and pro-life governors start taking that action, and we're beginning to see that. But uh, there are a lot of pro-life legislators, uh, legislatures in the country that could put this particular piece of legislation on the president's desk, and we hope they do. I mean, on the governor's desk, and we hope they do that. Senator, how do you respond to arguments that Planned Parenthood should still be able to receive Title X funding to help low-income patients with STD and cancer screenings, for example? Do those patients have other options for health care? Well, you know, the, I think the, the better provider uh, is for, particularly for the underserved, uh, is the federally qualified clinics. There are 16 of those for every Planned Parenthood clinic. Uh, in America. I don't know of a Planned Parenthood clinic that doesn't have uh, a uh, federally qualified health clinic alternative. Often the Planned Parenthood clinic actually refers those kinds of services to uh, exactly the people that we'd like to see as the principal provider of those. Uh, and uh, so hopefully uh, we'll con continue to move to where uh, that's, th those women's health services are really done by people who are in the business of providing women's health services, not providing abortions. Absolutely. Last year, the U.S. was one Senate vote away from defunding Planned Parenthood. Can you speak to the importance of electing pro-life lawmakers, Senator? Well, I think this is an important issue. It's an important issue to lots of voters. It's uh, an issue that uh, our society has generally dealt with by not allowing your money and my money to be spent uh, in a way that either supported or encouraged abortion. Uh, this is an area that Planned Parenthood, I think, has gotten outside the original stated purpose of the law. Uh, and uh, we don't have the votes to return to that stated purpose of the law right now to enforce what the law originally said. Uh, but uh, more, more uh, members of Congress having that point of view helps. Taking the actions we can take right now at state legislatures, uh, in governor's offices and in uh, the, the Federal Department of Health and Human Services uh, are also among the options that are available to us uh, as, as we look at uh, the situation right now. And finally, I wanna to switch topics here, Senator. Your home state of Missouri has passed a pain capable bill in the state house, which would protect babies from abortion after five months of pregnancy, but it's currently being held up in the state Senate. How confident are you the state Senate will vote on the pain capable bill? And what would it mean for Missouri to become the 21st state to pass this legislation protecting babies? Well, I don't give a lot of advice in Jefferson City, but this is legislation that I've sponsored at the federal level. It's legislation that uh, is overwhelmingly supported uh, by people on all sides of this issue once they realize you're talking about uh, babies that are far enough along in, in, in their, their growth that they are capable of experiencing pain. Uh, I'd like to see the Missouri legislature do it. I think there's a, still a great likelihood uh, that they will, and hopefully in the, next, the last few days of the legislative session, uh, they'll work together and get that done. We'll be watching for that. Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri, thank you for your time. Thank you, Catherine. We are now joined by a trusted pro-life expert in our Washington, D.C. studio. Autumn Christensen is policy director for the Susan B. Anthony List. It's good to have you back, Autumn. Thank you. Can you put this into context for us? How significant of a funding stream are these Title X funds? Yeah, so the Title X program is the second largest funding stream for mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood, nearly $60 million per year. So that funding stream is very important to their ability to recruit clients who later become their abortion clients. Autumn, um, then can you clarify where will this money, this Title X money go if it's not going to Planned Parenthood? What does this mean for people's health care? If Planned Parenthood chooses not to comply and get out of the abortion business, then the options are pretty extensive. There's already 4,000 uh, uh, 
providers within the Title X program. Planned Parenthood's only 450 mm. of those of those sites. So um, already within the program, quite a few. And then community health centers outnumber Planned Parenthood 20 to 1. So there are a number of organizations out there who could step up and fill any gaps. That's really good to hear. And Autumn, I want to get your take on this next story here. The video sharing site YouTube has reportedly suspended and now has reinstated videos from the abortion pill reversal account, citing its policy on harmful or dangerous content. Upon suspension, YouTube said it does not allow content that encourages or promotes violent or dangerous acts that have an inherent risk of serious physical harm or death. But after a review, YouTube determined the suspension was a, quote, mistake, and they reinstated it immediately. An abortion pill reversal gives a mother a second chance to save her child's life if she's already taken an abortion pill. The process has reportedly saved over 400 lives. Autumn, it's good to hear these videos are reinstated, but can you just be very clear? Is the abortion pill reversal a violent procedure? Not at all. You know, what's violent is the abortion pill itself. And the pill, uh, reversal pill, is the thing that can come along and help a mom who's changed her mind. It's the same drug that women take who are trying to prevent a miscarriage or during fertility treatment. It's a very routine drug. And this kind of censorship from social media sites, we've seen this before from on uh, targeting pro-life groups, haven't we? We have. Just a year ago, the Center for Medical Progress had a video um, showing Planned Parenthood's um, dismemberment of unborn children in a in a reasonable way, and that was pulled a year ago. Mm -hmm. Twitter pulled an, a, tw a tweet that we had put out about Mother Teresa and pro-life activity. So this is an ongoing battle and something we have to remain vigilant about. Absolutely, because we need to get that pro-life information out there. That's right. To our pro-lifers, Auden, thank you very much. Thank you.